Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the, on the world right now. And uh, thank you for joining me here um, today for uh, this uh, series, starting of a series of webinars called Demystifying Cybersecurity. Uh, my name is Liam Lynch. My company is L2 Cybersecurity Solutions. We use the motto Security Simplified uh, because I believe in making sure that people understand uh, about you know, cybersecurity and understanding how they can protect their businesses in as simple a way as possible. I try not to use any jargon or technical uh, uh, descriptions for things so that anybody at any level can understand it. Uh, October is Cybersecurity Month. Now, realistically, every month should be Cybersecurity Month, but you know, they put a focus on it in October to you know, sh uh, spread the knowledge and awareness about cybersecurity topics. And the motto for this year's Cybersecurity Month is Think Before You Click. So they want people to you know, pause before they open that strange attachment or click on that unusual link. So just think, pause, take a few seconds to see, you know, think, is it a valid link? Um, so I'm running these sessions. I'll be running uh, one every week at the same time at 2 p.m. Irish Standard Time uh, on a Tuesday. Now, I say that specifically uh, as Irish time because on the last session on uh, uh, Tuesday, the 27th of October, it will be at uh, 2 p.m. GMT because uh, we go into winter time the weekend beforehand. So uh, these sessions uh, that I'm running this month actually came from uh, another set of videos that I do every Friday, I put out what I call the Weekend Wisdom. These are short two-minute videos on some cybersecurity topic. Um, now, in two minutes, I cannot get into much detail about these topics, but you know uh, that's why I've, I've decided to create these uh, sessions for Cybersecurity Month. So, uh, if you'd like to subscribe to my channel uh, by clicking the button below to subscribe here, and you'll get notified when these videos go up. Or if you follow me on any of my social media channels, you'll get uh, you'll, you'll get to see my posts when I put them up. Okay, so uh, that's it. So we're going to talk about ransomware here today. And there was a great quote by uh, uh, James Scott, who is a, a senior fellow at the um, Institute for uh, uh, Critical Infrastructure Technology. When he talked about ransomware, now this is a few years ago, he said that ransomware is more about manipulating the vulnerabilities in human psychology than this adversary's technical, technological sophistication. Um, what he means by that is basically that uh, the bad guys are scare, using scare tactics to frighten people into paying the ransom. Now, things have moved on since, and we'll talk about that in a bit more detail later on. But today we're going to talk about um, you know, what is ransomware, what types there are, how does it get in, and then, you know, some tips then to, to, that you will uh, be able to protect yourself and your business from uh, getting infected with ransomware. So what is ransomware? It's basically malicious software that prevents access to your device or data. So, uh, and, and does that until you pay a ransom in some shape or form. Now, uh, in the early days, it was really about denying access to a person's device. It was the simplest thing in the world to just lock somebody out from their device. Um, but there were, you know, you know, the technicians were really easily able to uh, remove that blockages if you, if you knew somebody who could do that. So in more recent times, they've moved on to uh, denying access to data by encrypting the data on your computer. So an encryption means scrambling all of the data on your computer such that you know it, you won't be able to you know, gain access to it anymore without getting a key from the bad guys and you only get the key when you pay them now you know it, it varies kind of from years to years but you know and sometimes they didn't always give you the key to unlock your data or you weren't able to always get your data back even if you did pay and the kind of I suppose the question is should you pay uh, my feeling is always going to be you should never pay these guys because what you're doing is you're funding organized crime. You're funding these guys. You know, this is an easy crime for them to perpetrate, to make lots of money so that they can then use that to go on and, you know, spend money on gun running, drug smuggling, human trafficking, uh, child sexual abuse, 
all of these crimes are getting funded by the ransom, the, the payments that people make towards ransoms. So I would always be saying you should not pay. And now in some situations people say, but you know, my business will be gone. I have to, to pay. I don't have backups or my backups are gone. So, you know, in situations like that, your first port call, if you were ever uh, affected by ransomware, is to go on to nomoreransom.org. That's a website made by the good guys who have uh, put up uh, uh, decryptors for certain strains of ransomware so that you can get, um, you know, you can possibly get your data back if they have it already broken, the, the, the encryption. So that's your first port call. And that's free of charge. Uh, there's no charge for, for those services. Um, but the other thing I would ca caution against about going to pay the ransom is that in some situations, the criminal organizations behind these have been, um, you know, they, they, they're sanctioned by various law enforcement and, and, and governments. Um, over in the US, uh, they, 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 the Treasury Department there have uh, set some certain ransomware uh, people as being uh, illegal uh, organizations. So if a company pays them money, pays them a ransom, that company is actually breaking the law and they will get it with significant financial penalties. And in recent months, the EU have done a similar thing where they have uh, identified certain uh, organizations as being criminal and that no company should do any business with them. They should not pay any money. So realistically, you know, to avoid ransomware, your best bet is to prevent it ever happening to you in the first place. And, you know, we'll hopefully get to that uh, towards the end of, uh, you know, to, to cover that off uh, towards the end of the session today. So um, the types of ransomware then from, you know, uh, in the earlier days, like four or five years ago, it was really all about just infecting or affecting a single device, your computer, uh, your laptop, your desktop, um, whatever it might be. So, uh, and you know, uh, it, uh, it, it spread from there and it evolved as all bad things do. Um, we had in 2017, we had the WannaCry ransomware, which was actually a, 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 what's called a ransomware worm because once it infected uh, one machine, it would then scramble all the data on that machine and then jump to any other machines it could see on the network. So it would worm its way through various networks. Uh, so that was WannaCry and this was the one you may remember, uh, this is one that brought down the NHS in the UK, a lot of their hospitals were shut down with it uh, because of WannaCry. There were some hospitals here that may have been affected too, uh, in Ireland I mean. So uh, that was WannaCry. Now that was widely spread and most people will have remembered that, but there was another ransomware worm that came along later on that year, in fact just a few weeks later, called NotPetya. Uh, now this was actually much more uh, destructive uh, uh, on a worldwide basis uh, in that it affected much more, many more companies and it actually came from the Ukraine. Uh, there was a, a businesses in Ukraine, they had to use this software package um, for doing their tax returns. And what the bad guys did, they got in to the, the, that software and they put in this NotPetya ransomware into that software. And so as soon as somebody in a Ukrainian office opened up the software, it deployed NotPetya and it just, again, like a worm, it spread all around that, that company's offices and locations. And NotPetya badly affected um, the companies like DHL uh, and Maersk. Uh, and Maersk is the huge global shipping giant. Uh, they were completely dead in the water for for a very long time. We're talking about weeks and months that they were badly impacted by NotPetya. And that was because they had one office in, in, in Ukraine, opened up the software, and it just spread all across their network. And, you know, it was, it was significantly cost them, you know, millions and millions of dollars to, to recover from uh, NotPetya. Now, both Monocry and NotPetya they were what we call wipers. They just wiped all the data, or they scrambled all the data. They were not, you were not able to really get that data back because there was no key. They were just maliciously destructive and you know, they were really, really bad. So um, 
but that, that was the kind of next evolution was the, the worming capability. Uh, and now we've gotten to more, uh, ransomware that will do that when they get in on a, a single computer. They will then look to sp uh, spread across the network, you know, infect, infect all the servers and anything they can see when they get in on somebody's uh, network. And then the most recent and most disturbing development in this whole thing is what we call the data stealers. Uh, and what they, these are doing is the bad guys get in on somebody's network and they look around, they, they probe around, they look for juicy targets, some nice servers with lots of good data, you know, financial information, personal data, all this sort of stuff. They'll find all this data, they'll take a copy of it to themselves, and this, this will take some time, like we're talking could be weeks and maybe months even. They'll take a copy of the data and they'll find all the nice good juicy bits and then it'll wait until something important is going to happen in the company. Like maybe they're about to launch a new product or you know they're merging with another company or you know there's some big event going on in the company. And then they'll just, you know, they'll have planted the ransomware uh, software on all the devices in the network and then they'll just send the instruction, activate, and the whole network will get ransomware and everything will, will effectively be shut down. And what they then do is they say, right, you know, you want to pay us money to uh, recover your data. You know, so that's how, how many thousands, hundreds, thousands, millions, whatever it might be, uh, they will look for. Now, if you're in a good position where you've got backups, that's great. You can say, no, thanks. I, I'm not going to pay you to get uh, my data back. I already have a good backup here. They will then say, okay, fine. We've got a copy of your, your data. How would you like us to share this with the world and put it in a public place? So if you don't want us to do that, pay us some, uh, you know, additional loads and loads of money to be able to delete that data, which, you know, it really is, it's really, really, really nasty. And it really puts companies in a really bad position because, you know, they may have taken all the good steps to protect themselves from that, but they obviously didn't take enough steps to, you know, to stop the guys getting in. So you have to take those additional steps, but these ransomers are, the, the data stealers are really, really cruel. Um, and you know it's it's really bad that they, they uh, that they do this, but this is the evolution that we're facing. And there's been a lot of of, of uh, businesses affected by that this year. Um, uh, so you know it, it just happens. Uh, so that's the type of ransomware. So how do they get into our networks? Well, uh, you know it's the kind of the usual way for many many years was through an email with uh, either an attachment, which was some way malicious, it might have an executable, um, uh, you know, Word document or Excel spreadsheet that might have a macro in it. And you, when you enable uh, content, it then executes, downloads the ransomware from the internet, and then, you know, zaps the computer, uh, spreads around the network, or it would be a link to a website that again does something similar, downloads the software in the background and, you know, brings it down and then executes the, the ransomware. Um, like uh, another ve uh, vector would be, like we said there with NotPetya, would be getting into the supply chain. So somebody gets into your uh, into your software supply chain, maybe you, know, you have, you're using some open source software, they might break in through that, or you know they, they might affect one of your uh, suppliers. And if that supplier, like your IT service provider, uh, this has happened quite a lot over in the US, where uh, IT service providers, they have remote access into all of their clients' networks to be able to provide support. If the ransomware uh, uh, criminals, if they compromise that IT service provider, they then are able to get in to all of those uh, clients belonging to uh, the, 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 the IT service provider. So, you know, that's one another way they, they can get into your network. Uh, it could be something as simple as allowing somebody to insert a USB key into your network. You know, it just you know, pop it in, it automatically executes some code on the USB key. And, you know, again, it's like clicking on a link or downloading an attachment. But a lot of the data stealer types, uh, the way they get in is uh, like what we just said there about the IT service providers. They might get in through uh, a remote access solution. And since COVID-19 has hit, what have a lot of companies been doing and expecting their employees to do? 
access the company networks remotely. So come in through some kind of remote access solution. And that there's vulnerabilities around that. That's where uh, the, the, the bad guys are getting in. They, 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 they will search, they will scan, and they will probe any remote access capability any office has, any company has, and they will look for vulnerabilities. And if they're able to get in through those vulnerabilities, they're in your network, and then they can just set up a shop on some, uh, you know, uh, on some server or some PC somewhere, and then spend their time looking around the network, looking for juicy data, like I mentioned earlier. So that's kind of where you need to be concerned about is the, you know, the, the, the they're going to be there for a long time and they're going to break in through something like a remote access solution. So uh, now you know, if you do hit, say, a, a download like an attachment or a link, if it hits immediately, if you like, you you click on the link and or you open that attachment, and like three or four seconds later, a message pops up to say, you know, you you you've been ransomware, or you know, you have to pay Bitcoin to this to get your data back. That one is unlikely to be a data stealer because it, it has affected you so quickly. It's unlikely to have downloaded any data. It just wipes all the data that it can see. But as I say, if they were Coming in through a remote access solution, they could have been in your network for weeks or months. Uh, it's kind of really trivial for them to do that and keep quiet and, and uh, just see everything that's going on in your network. They could also have been, you know, potentially corrupting your backups. You know, you might have been diligently taking backups as you're expected to do so, but they have been quietly then, you know, uh, corrupting them after the fact. So. They just download all the data and then just wait for the perfect opportunity that will cause maximum effect and then hit you where they'll execute ransomware and you know that's you know, going to be really really bad for the business now i'm not going to cover today how you should handle uh, you know if you do get hit with an, an incident of ransomware um, because it's it's a whole other subject really and so on the 27th of October uh, on the, the, the session then on Tuesday at uh, 2 p.m. GMT I will be talking about how you handle uh, an incident like that like a ransomware incident but uh, so be sure to come come back to me then so how can you protect yourself from ransomware uh, so there's you know uh, you know there's a lot of stuff you can do and the most important one, and, it, and it's not just for ransomware, it's for everything. If you have a fire, a flood, or somebody drops a coffee into a, into a laptop, you know, it's going to be have a bad day. You're going to possibly lose data. Backups are always your friend. I know backups are boring, they're tedious, uh, but, you know, if you don't have backups, you're never going to be able to recover your data. So, and I know I just said that, you know, the bad guys, if they're sitting in your network, they may have been corrupting your backups. But if you make sure that at least one copy of your backups is kept offline, that will not be accessible to the bad guys or to the ransomware, should it execute. It's offline, it's not connected, it can't be impacted. So you will at least have one good copy of, the, of, of a backup. And now that could be something like an external hard disk, or you might mount a, a drive at a remote location, mount it, back up to it, dismount it, so that the, the backup is not available. It's only online when it's been backed up too. Uh, now, and it's critical, and this is the one thing about backups that people keep forgetting to do, is test it. You need to test the backups. It's really, really crucial that you do so, because just in case they have corrupted it, you know, that might be a sign that there, there's somebody who is corrupting your backups. But also, you know, the, the, the hardest might have the external hard drive or whatever you're using to back up to might have issues. Uh, it may not have backed up everything successfully. So about once a month, uh, if not more often, you should check those backups. Do a random test and see if you can access certain data on those backups. Just to be sure, to be sure. Another thing you can do is... Make sure all your devices, all your computers, all your laptops, all your servers, they're all patched and up to date. You know those nuisance things that Microsoft keep pushing on people? You need to update your computer, the updates are applying. It's really critical that you let them happen. You know, it's, it's super critical. So let them happen. Make sure the devices are kept as fully up to date as possible. 
because that will then remove any vulnerabilities that might exist that the bad guys might try and exploit to break into your network. You should also have some kind of anti-malware uh, solution like antivirus or uh, endpoint protection. They call it various things, uh, but these are you know software that should you should put on on your computers to just have another layer of security. Now, some people say Microsoft have Windows Defender or Microsoft Defender as it may be now called. That's good enough, but I would also always say to a uh, uh, to a business it's probably better just to have that extra. You know, checkbox to just say we have something else looking at this too. Um, and one of the non technical areas that you need to look at is security awareness training for staff. You need to be able to show them, you know, what kind of types of emails they might receive that might contain uh, ransomware or some of the techniques that the bad guys might use if they pick up the phone and they contact them, they might try and uh, what they call social engineer their way into uh, a company. You know, Hi, this is IT. Can you give me your password? You know that type of thing. So, you got to make sure your staff get receive good training in that, so they can become what they call the human firewall. In a more advanced situation, you might want to put in place things like firewalls, intrusion detection systems, intrusion prevention systems, uh, and security uh, incident and event monitoring. These are applications and devices that uh, we look at all the traffic and block bad traffic and you know detect maybe detect some some suspicious uh, activity on your network and you know block it as well so these are all kind of important tools but you know these would be maybe a bit more advanced than a small business owner would expect to use you'd also have things like application whitelists so that there are, these are things where you have uh, you know you tell your computer i will only execute microsoft word microsoft excel microsoft outlook you know these are the only software applications that should be used so that anything else that might be, you know, ransomware.exe does not get executed. But that does cause a burden on, on using your machine. But, you know, uh, it's, it's, a, it's another step that you could take. Also, like in the Maersk example I used there earlier, where their entire network was affected just from the, the U Ukrainian um, office, that if you segment your network, that means you break it up. You might, you know, keep things like, you know, keep one office separate to the other. You don't have it completely, you know, open and that every office can see each other so clearly. That might prevent white, more widespread uh, in, infections. So those are the, 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 what I was intending to cover here today. I'm just going to check now for any um, questions uh, before I, I do my conclusion. So... Does using VPN help secure your remote access solution? Um, it's, uh, well, it's a good way of making sure that uh, your end users, no matter where they are, they're connecting in very securely. So they could be sitting in a, a coffee shop um, or you know a library or something like that, or they could be connecting in and if they're using a, a VPN, they're, they will be nice and secure doing so. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily make the remote access solution completely secure. The remote access solution could be, um, uh, you know, if it's still vulnerable, whether you have people coming in through a VPN or not, it, that, that's slightly a, a separate topic. Thank you, Vincent. So, if... Uh, so, that, that's really, um, you know, it on ransomware for the moment, as I say. Uh, I'll be coming back in, you know, next week um, uh, with another session. But to deal with a ransomware incident, uh, please do be sure to come back on, on Tuesday, the 27th of October uh, uh, for that. So uh, in conclusion, so I hope, you know, now that you know more about the scourge, that is ransomware, uh, you know, and how you can protect yourself, uh, you know, if, as long as you put some of these measures in place, you really are going to reduce your risk of getting affected by ransomware. And it's just becoming, you know, it's crazy at the moment. Like even yesterday, Europol put out their uh, 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 organized crime um, report, which showed their, their first port call was ransomware, saying that it has become very, very disruptive and, and uh, you know, incredibly lucrative for the bad guys. And this is the thing. They're making loads of money from this. They really are. Now, yes, they're affecting big, large corporations and they're looking for millions of dollars in Europe uh, in ransom. 
but they're also hitting the small guys. And you only hear about the big guys because they get into the public domain. But a lot of small businesses, I'm afraid, and I've come across uh, several of them in my time, that have been really super bad uh, affected by uh, ransomware. So if you just take some of those simple measures that I talked about there, you really will help reduce your, your exposure. So uh, next week, we'll be talking about insider, excuse me, insider threats and uh, shadow IT, uh, which is another kind of area of risk that I've, I've had people ask me about. So we'll cover that off next week at 2 p.m. Irish time, uh, uh, 1 p.m. Yeah, UTC. So uh, just in conclusion, then, the uh, just leave you with another quote from uh, the good uh, 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 James Scott, uh, that senior fellow with the uh, uh, Institute for Critical Infrastructure and Technology. Ransomware is unique among cybercrime because in order for the attack to be successful, it requires the victim to be a, uh, uh, become a willing accomplice after the fact. So that, you know, they've executed their, 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 their attack and now the accomplice becomes the end user who ends up paying. Don't be the person that pays. Please protect yourself. So with that then, I shall wrap up this uh, stream this week. Thank you very much for, for joining me here today. I hope you found it interesting. Please do come back next week, same time, same uh, channel. Uh, as I say, you know, subscribe there on the, the YouTube or if you follow me on any of my social media channels, you'll get, to, you'll, you'll get reminders about this coming up next week. So thank you again, folks, and take care.